right, here we are at 2006 Sea Ray 290 Sundancer for sale here on the beautiful freshwaters in Norris Lake, Tennessee. We're here for our video walkthrough tour. Now, I won't mention the asking price in this video tour just because they will often change until the listing is sold. But I, as always, like to invite you to visit our website, which is at www.yournewboat.com, which is you'll find the most up to date information regarding all of our listings, including this one. We're going to put a link for this listing in the uh, written description below the video. Uh, below the video, So down in the details, there'll be a link where um, that will that you'll be able to copy and paste and take right to the photo slideshow page of this listing over our website. And when you do make it over there, you'll be able to contact us by phone, by text, or by email. We do like to remind you if you call us on the phone, you would like a return phone call, but you get our voicemail, Please make sure you leave us a message. And if you do one better, if you leave a detailed message, let me know which list you're looking at, what questions you have. We are often without cell phone reception. And if you take the time to do that, then as soon as I get back in range or finish up with the customer, I can return your call, have all your questions answered for you. And then also, if you send us an email through the website and you have not received a reply in one business day, check your spam folder. It, that is likely where the reply went to. So this slip is transferable, and this thought to be a freshwater boat came to the Tennessee area by way of uh, Georgia. I believe it spent some time down on Lake Lanier, and then from uh, the Knoxville area, it made its way up here to beautiful Norris Lake. This is equipped with 4.3 liter V6 multi-port fuel injected engines and Bravo 3 dual prop out drives. I've also got um, some underwater lights, although the lights are actually above the water, but they're underneath your swim deck. Um, you can see that dual prop drive right there. Here's your swim boarding ladder. A uh, little ski tow hook. And before I step on board, I wanna go ahead and raise this back hatch for you. Just so I can show you a few things. So we've got a uh, 30 amp shore power cord. It actually goes through this little hole right here. So you don't actually have to um, have try to have the cord going overneath this, this uh, hatch. That would not be good. Uh, but you've also got your dockside water hookup. That's pressure water hookup. Meaning if your uh, marina provides water, you just simply plug the, uh, put your hose onto that connection right there. And that's gonna plumb the boat. This right here is just a fresh water uh, spigot where you can use either your onboard water or that same water and, and you can hook a hose up if you want or we're doing some cleaning or anything like that. Got a main breaker switch right here. Um, again, this is that 30 amp shore power hookup feed and then phone and um, cable TV jack is just below the shore power hookup. And everything else back here is just uh, storage space. And as you can see, it's also lighted. Now then, the other thing back here on our swim platform would be your uh, handheld, little handheld shower, and that is hot and cold water. And I'm gonna step on here through that camper canvas enclosure, which is in place. Also wanna point out, we've got a screen. Now, oh, might be hard to see, but there's a screen here. Um, as well as your eyes and glass enclosure. And then essentially, this is a double bimney top overhead. So you've got radar arch over top about where your driver is, a small canvas bimney top, that's umbrella canvas, uh, that immediately attaches to that arch. And then you'll see a separate zippered section uh, right here where this second bimini top is going to go you can use this in any combination you can just have your your smaller bimini right here or you can do the double bimini and then at that point you can add on the eyes and glass camper enclosure back here for the back portion of the cockpit now up at the um, front of the radar arch we just have these eyes and glass um, plastic eyes and glass that's going to install there. And you can also see we've got a zipper that needs a repair 
on this side right here. That That's functional as it is because you've got all this other frame holding that up as well as a little bit of a Velcro there that helps to hold that in place. But that zipper does need to be repaired. And then in the summertime, um, you can either roll up these windows or you can take this entire eyes and glass off in the summertime. It's really just uh, the user preference and how they are using the boat. Now, down uh, to the floor level of our cockpit, we've got snap-in carpeting, got a removable lounge table. There's storage under all these seats back here, storage under that one. And then this one here pops down and gives you a little cup holder. And there's also storage under here too. Those, the seat bases will remove where you can access that storage. Right here's a little Norcold. Um, this is a 12 volt or um, electric and AC or a DC, a 12 volt refrigerator. That means that will run on battery power and it will also run either when you're plugged into shore power or with your generator running. Little concealed waste bin right underneath our cockpit sink. Four little cup holder frames here in our cockpit. Two more cup holders over here at your companion seat. And then of course two more uh, right there in that uh, little pull down cushion. And then of course you've also got some storage under these cushions as well. Um, now we get a little bit of uh, just wear on that fiberglass right here underneath that seat where just that's been kind of bumped and banged a few times and gave you a little nick right there. The other side is fine. Put this cushion back into place. All right, moving on up to your driver station. We've got a flip up bolster driver seat. That's a little bit of a wider seat. And this is also a bolster right here next to your driver seat. So you've kind of got room there to, uh, to have someone else with you here at your driver seat. Uh, two more cup holders right here, just behind uh, or just to the uh, lower of your driver seat. There's your controls. Uh, you, of course, you've got tilt steering wheel here, uh, stereo remote. We've got a Clarion AM, FM, CD, CD changer, uh, auxiliary input stereo. We've got four speakers here in our cockpit, two more speakers down in the cabin. And then we've got remote spotlight. We've got a 12 volt power outlet right here. Remote spotlight, and that will do a floodlight or a spotlight. There's your floodlight. There's a spotlight, and then of course that's also directional. So we'll go back to the floodlight and see where that will go up and down and side to side. Windless anchor on this one, powered engine hatch. We've got a bilge pump blower. We've function tested all this. Trim tabs, so you got a functional horn as well. And then over here, um, actually I'll turn on this, uh, your navigation lights, and that's gonna kind of light up all of your switches and gauges. We've got a windshield wiper here at your into your driver's seat on the starboard side. And then these are all your other lights. Um, compartment lights, that's what was lighting that uh, back co uh, compartment where your shore power plugged into. Bilge light is down in the engine room. You'll see that here in a, in a few when we raise that hatch. And then we've got the arch light and cockpit lights. Stereo remote right here. Actually, that's not gonna power up because I don't have uh, the power turned to that or turned on for that. And then um, here at your gauges, you power these up here. So we've got Mercury SmartCraft uh, gauge on this, and that is really super convenient because it's going to show you things like your fuel economy as you're going down a lake. Uh, this will do miles per gallon. Um, some of these will do gallons per hour. This will give you an estimated fuel range based off how you're running the boat and how much fuel is left. Um, that is a uh, mile per hour, just a digital display. Um, this is your analog mile per hour. Your, it's keep track of your fuel used, um, air temperature, water temperature. There's your fuel remaining. This is a uh, engine synchronizer gauge. That's basically going to be just a, a quick reference, um, a quick point of reference so you can see if you've got one engine running faster or slower than the other because with the uh, those dual engines, uh, your tax instead it's basically just a quick reference point. So instead of having to look back and forth at each gauge, that's just going to keep track of both and it'll just show you a line which one's running slower so you can adjust the throttle. Um, and it's, it's just there to try to keep your eyes up and um, watch them where you're supposed to be going instead of staring at the gauge. So that's why they put those rudder angle indicators or, or 
I'm sorry, that's why they put those RPM synchronizer gauges on there. This is a quick reference point. Uh, you've also got your, your fuel level here, or your fuel gauge there, and then you've got your port and starboard engines. Each has their own cluster gauges for your uh, oil pressure, uh, water temperature, battery bolts, and your drive trail. Now, should point out that our displays on both your port and starboard engines are not powering up. And additionally, we've got a little bit of, of kind of wear on your gauges. Let me see if the if the right lighting hits this, you might be able to see what I'm talking about. Um, does not affect the functionality of them whatsoever because as you can see, you can you can see through um, what a little bit of a, of kind of wear that is on that uh, gauge glass. Um, you can see it and see through it, but just uh, from a, a cosmetic standpoint, you can also kind of, when the uh, light hits at the right angle, you can kind of see that the screen is, is just um, has, oh, it's just got some, some lines on there. So compass just in front of all that. And then this is a North Star 6000i. That is a GPS chart plotter, and that's gonna show you exactly where you are on the lake, and you'll be able to track yourself around the lake um, and things like that. And it also has rivers on there as well, so. So there's that uh, bolster seat, we referenced that. We're gonna come back for the engine room after we finish up down in the cabin. And, oh, uh, one more thing I wanted to show you before we left the cockpit area. You've got a little fold down step right there and that is so you can utilize that uh, to step over your dash and go through um, this this wind, windscreen right here. That'll take you up to the bow where your anchor is. Um, and that's just simply, um, that's right there, and I'm not going to go through there today because of your eyes and glasses snap down onto that framing. All right, so down into our cabin. It's a lockable cabin door, and this will also slide. And there's a catch for that too that will um, lock into place and keep it from sliding around while you're underway. Now, first thing I want to show you here, as we step down into our cabin area, here's your power panel. Um, done up there at that helm, so I'm going to go ahead and turn those ignition switches off. You've also got a um, basically a toggle switch up there where once these are turned on, you can start each engine. Uh, this is your separate generator, remote start and stop, um, bilge and blower switch. This does have a 5kW color generator. Again, you'll see that when we raise that engine hatch, and then you've got your your AC panel, which is your either your generator power or your shore power. You've got a transfer switch for that right here that's a little bit now, let me add some more light into this. Um, that's basically just a, we'll call it, sometimes people call that an idiot switch or a dummy switch, and that's basically to keep you from turning on generator power while you're also using your shore power. That switch will not slide over until you turn your shore power off. So your, uh, your outlets, refrigerator, microwave, Water heater, this has six gallon dual source hot water heater. We'll also see that when we visit the engine room. Uh, we've got a range top, your AC. And um, here, there's your 12 volt panel right there. Here's that Clarion head unit for your stereo. Uh, again, this is AM, FM, CD, CD, six disc CD changer, auxiliary input, and satellite ready. All right, now that. Also here, we've got a little waste bin. Put conveniently underneath that step. And that's just to kind of get that out of the way. So now here's our cabin of the uh, of the 290 Sundancer. Got a nice little seat, uh, V-berth bed, a little galley over here. Let me step down a little bit more. Okay, so lots of storage space on this. You can pop open these cabinets. You've got several of these, easy stacked. One, two, three right there. We've got storage underneath your little um, cabin seat, and then more as we move forward. So, removable dining table right here. I do want to point out, we got a little wear on this, um, basically on each end. But again, nothing that, that uh, it's more just cosmetic. Nothing's gonna um, affect the usability of this. Um, two windows right there, and those also have screens. Some more storage right here. And a little hanging locker right here. Two more storage 
cabinets right there and then like I said here is that a large V berth also cabinets underneath of that and then we've got a 10,000 BTU cruise air reverse cycle rain heat and air conditioning unit that simply means it's a geothermal based system it's going to use the lake water make hot or cool air uh, but the uh, controls for that's actually up here by your your galley sink another 12 volt outlet here but the unit itself is actually under here and then this is a 24 inch pro scan lcd flat screen television there's this is on a mount and you can actually kind of can loosen and tighten that mount so you can move that around depending on where your your guest or yourself seated so you'll be able to see that better and then we've also got to integrate with this television you've got a um a dvd player that's built into this that would be right there and that'll also allow you to have sound over your cabin speakers and you've also got basically an auxiliary input right here now while we're still here in the v-birth area a couple things to point out first off overhead here is your bow hatch and this can be utilized several ways so that is open where you can see through that that window you've got the screen that comes over this way and then of course you can go right back to where we had it with that uh, block out uh, privacy curtain on there cabin light switch is here and then this right here will let you pull this whole seat up and I'm gonna slide I get a little extra cushion right down here uh, basically there's a, uh, a storage compartment underneath this and another access hatch about right under this area and that's where that actual AC unit is that uh, heat and air unit so that basically just kind of slides into position and that's a mount and gives you some more seating area so that can go you can basically very easily get made into a bed or or a little seat a little bench bench seat area all right on to our galley area there's your second this is again this ac dc refrigerator that means it's powered by uh, the option of either your shore power and generator power or simply your your battery power a little storage cabinet here fire extinguisher mounted under there for safety uh get another look another little port window there some storage up here in the cabinet again a little in integrated microwave some more storage in your galley area outlet and your uh, your light switch there now here's your little single burner this is a electric smooth top range and of course that's a little safety switch there but nice little cover so that you can have the more counter space when you need it and the same goes for this little sink cover that's a little stainless cup cabin sink with that little cover again to just give you extra cabin space all right moving on through this one this would be your mid cabin and we've got a 15 inch lg television back here in your mid cabin a little cabinet underneath and then also that would be the dvd the built-in dvd player additional auxiliary um, inputs or well i say auxiliary it's it's basically a uh, yeah, I think that's still called the auxiliary, although sometimes we think of auxiliary switch for stereo, but yeah, that's your video and your left and right audio plugs for auxiliary inputs as well as your electrical outlet there. Switch for those lights right there. And stepping out of that mid cabin, here is your head. And that is a vacuum flush head, 25 gallon waste holding tank on this one, 25 gallon freshwater tank. Um, and then I'll have the fuel capacities listed at the website. So uh, another little stainless sink. This is a little vanity sink storage under there, the port window. Um, that would be a um, vent for your heating and air system. Storage under that as well. And then of course this faucet can come up and mount right here in the corner for when you, whenever you need to take a shower. All right, we'll close close that door there. I do want to point out we we do have a little bit of staining down here in the 
and the cab in it. I actually tend to see this quite a bit in these cabins because you're around the water, things get brought in wet. I'm gonna turn this light off, see if you can see that better. I'm not sure if that was better or worse. Maybe it was a little worse. Go back on with that light just to give you. Just so, you know, like I said, we, we always try to act or portray our listings as accurately as possible. Don't, we don't like for you to show up and be surprised by anything. That means we did not do a good job representing a listing. So give you a shot of your headliner just so you can kind of see again that 360 degree tour. Trying to show you everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's just a little um, access hatch for your shower sump pump. And I believe a little cabin bill is pumped down there as well. All right, back up into our cockpit. Before I raise that powered engine hatch, I do want to point out, we've taken the uh, time before the video started, we've unhooked that camper canvas enclosure. You'd be surprised how many of those enclosures I see actually get uh, ripped. Um, and it's, it's because whenever they try to raise their engine hatch, they forgot to remove those snaps on the back part of those uh, enclosures. All right, powered engine hatch going up. Now that cockpit table can be stowed right where you see those orange life jackets at. I had to keep going, but that's plenty. And here's those 4.3 liter Mercruiser. Again, these are V6 multi-port fuel injected, inboard outboard stern drive engines with the optional Bravo 3 dual prop out drive. So it's a nice power package for this boat. Here's our six gallon water heater, and that is a dual source. It, you can, the uh, hoses that are going just below the blue and the red hose, that is uh, one of your cooling hoses coming off of this port side engine. And that simply circulates uh, that engine water through there before it exits the boat. And that will allow you to make hot water just simply by running your port engine. So regardless of whether you're plugged into shore power or generator, you've got, you've got two different ways to make hot water. There's your batteries. These are all from 2019 onboard battery charger and some uh, fuse panels back there in the corner. That's a, let's see, what is that? A three bank, three bank uh, charger. Um, there are uh, estimated about under 400 hours on both of these engines. There's our Sea Fire Halon automatic fire extinguisher right there about the center of the frame now. And then here's your starboard side engine. We've got a thousand watt boat safe engine compartment heater. Here's your 25 gallon waste holding tank and that's the vacuum pump that runs that vacuum flush head. And then right here, this is your, I believe this is a 25 gallon uh, fresh water tank. And basically just have some insulation around this just so that your fresh water doesn't turn into hot water uh, from being back here in the engine room. So see Ray took the time to to do that with the fresh water tanks that ha um, that they end up mounting in our engine room. And then here's that 5kW Kohler marine uh, generator. And there are about 550 hours on that 5kW Kohler generator. All right. Let me uh, let me lower the hatch just enough. Before I do, I'm gonna put that cockpit carpet in a little bit of a kick so it's not in the way as that goes back down. And again, if you do have any questions about this boat, want to set up a showing of it, please reach out to us through the website. Again, that's yournewboat.com. There's gonna be a link in the written details of this just below this video if you're on the YouTube page. Um, you can use that link to go right to the listing for this one. You'll you'll have a uh, once you do make it over to the website, you have a link to email us, and you can reach out to us by phone, by text, or by email, whatever's most convenient for you. So I'm going to get a little bit more up close and personal here on the exterior of this one. There's your Lumar uh, plow anchor, windless anchor. Um, again. We have function tested that 
uh, remote spotlight. You've got foot pedal controls as well as controls up there at your helm station. So your navigation light is on right there. And there's a little bit of uh, dock rash and some marks around the exterior of this one. So we're going to show you that now. There's a little mark right there just through the gel coat. Uh, same thing here and right there. Two more tiny marks right there. And let's get that light back on again. Show you. That light might fade some of this out. But I think without it, you're not going to be able to see much at all. So actually, this little mark here... It just barely catches my fingernail in a few spots. So with the real good buff and wax, that mark may disappear almost completely. Um, now the other ones that we'll be showing you were, were not as fortunate. This one right here may, may disappear. Um, a little bit bigger mark right down there just above, above that white accent stripe. Another one right here. A few more right in here. And another one actually in that stripe. There's your fresh water fill as well as your wastewater pump out. And then a couple more right there. And moving on back. Up here above the rub rail, we got uh, several marks and those most of those all appear to be through that gel coat and again that's that underwater light that we had on a moment ago and a pretty good mark right there um, you can see the fiberglass in just below that that cleat all right now this rub rail has some wear on it but that is what it's designed for so you've basically got a stainless steel uh, insert in the middle of that uh, kind of a hard plastic but again there's kind of some marks all along the way there there's one right right here and some kind of good chunks in that rub row and then just above the rub row right here this is actually under your fiberglass right here um, some of that other stuff might come uh, or disappear again with that good uh, buff and wax of uh, that black a lot of times gets transferred off of this black fender right here but that definitely is through the gel coat there. And then the rest appears to be kind of more wear on your rub rail, which again is where you would prefer it over having it on the boat. Two more marks right over there. And let me reposition myself to go down the port side. Now up here, this is a basic little insert piece for your uh, uh, blowers for the engine room. And that, that would have been through the fiberglass, but then they've kind of filled that up with a little bit of sealant just to protect it. And then here's a series of a couple marks right here below the rub rail here on the port side. And then this is the worst of it right here. We've got, this is your typical dock rash. You kind of see these patterns where the lines go up and down or side to side. That's basically where uh, there just there wasn't a good fender uh, somewhere where this was parked at some point in its life. And when the water moved around with waves, those little marks kind of got went up and down and got made. So a um, little bit below the rub rail here, uh, rolling out the rub rail, but there's just a little bitty um, notch in that that whole side and now my advice to people when they're buying a boat that's got some marks on it like this pretty much all this is cosmetic because it's up above the water line but my advice is do not fix this right away even if you are a fairly experienced boater when you if you're stepping up maybe to a larger boat you're still gonna have a little bit of a learner's curve and so what I recommend don't fix these right away. Now, if you're a newer boater, you might not fix them for maybe two years. First time boater, you might wait three years to get these fixed. Um, and that's for several reasons. Another little mark right there through the gel coat. So if you're moving up in size, probably gonna have a little bit of a learner's curve. And the last thing you'd wanna do is pay to have 
all those marks fixed and made it look like new again. And then your third time out, wing gets you a little bit as you're heading into your slip and you end up putting your own mark on there. So that's why it's hold off on getting that. And again, if you're um, not as experienced, you might, you might give it a season till you kind of get the hang of it and then you get them repaired. And again, if you're a first time boater, um, starting with this one, cause it, it fits the size that you're looking for. Um, yeah, wait, wait a couple, wait a couple seasons because the last thing you want to do is pay all that money to get all those, uh, marks repaired and the boat looking new again. Next thing you know, you put your mark of your own on it. So if you wait a little bit, wait for that learner's curve. Um, and the other thing is after a couple years of using it, you may decide you want to change models. Maybe you want a newer boat, maybe you want a bigger boat. Um, so that's another reason kind of hold off, hold off and, and see, you know, see what your long-term plans are after you've, uh, if you've kind of figured it out and mastered it. So that's gonna wrap things up for us today. Again, this uh, covered slip is transferable. Boat can stay right here where it is. Uh, we are here near the Clinton Norris exit off of I-75 um, in East Tennessee, just north of Knoxville. Boat can stay right here or we can work with you to get this shipped to you, uh, whether it's getting transferred somewhere else in the lake or or Rob, going down the Tennessee River, or where have you, we've got local transporters. We can recommend some options if you're looking to transport this even farther across the country. But again, um, the most up-to-date list of equipment and the current asking price, use that link below this video uh, to get to that part of our website. But again, the website's yournewboat.com. And I thank you again for joining us. And this will conclude the 2006 Sea Ray 290 Sundancer for sale here on beautiful Norse Lake. And this one's powered by the uh, twin, twin Merc Cruiser 4.3 liter M MPI multi-port fuel injector, inboard outboard engines, Bravo 3 drives. Um, you'll see the unionboat.com logo popping up in the top right hand corner of your screen. And that's just a shortcut to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's a great way to uh, keep an eye on new listings as they come available in our area. And I thank you again for joining us.